Welcome back Sheffield Live TV on this special evening of Thursday when we have uh, great guests and a, a really special one this evening and Martin Hodge, the former Sheffield Wednesday goalkeeper, did mention, uh, Martin, at the start of the show that you hold the record for consecutive appearances. I know you're not a great one for stats either on the field or off the field uh, when you study them, but 214 consecutive league and cup appearances for the Owls beating the previous record set by Mark Hooper. You knew all of that, of course. No. You didn't? I knew, I knew, uh, well, I tell a lie. I thought it was 184. Then I realised it was 214 when I started. Yep. But, um, but uh, it is interesting because I'm not one to look back at at previous and stats, I, I just get on with what the next thing is. Um, you scrap. I don't mind. Instance, I don't mind know. talking about it. I don't. You know, people yeah. like stop me and chat, and I don't mind. But it's not something I don't keep mementos. The only thing I keep is programs, and that's probably because nobody will have them. But I've got thousands <laughs> of them. But I've yeah. got the games I played in, and it's interesting. And I look back, and my mum used to keep cuttings, and she's not alive now. So I had all the cuttings, and I didn't realise what she kept yeah. was book the book and they're yeah. still in my garage um, and and now and again when I'm pottering I'll just have a flick through and I'll go who's that handsome bloke and I'll realize it's not me <laughs> slim, slim, slim line fella slim, slim, slim line. line fella yeah uh, some of the memories are relived via some tweets so I'm going to enjoy reading those to you in a, in a few minutes time overall at Sheffield Wednesday 246 appearances 60 clean sheets that's something else you didn't know I work out it's an average of about one in four you see, hey it's not bad eh? you've let me down because I tell everybody 214 clean sheets <laughs> 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 Sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> Actually, it's not bad one, one in four. It's it sounds, really good, eh? It sounds good, yeah. It's not bad. Before that, you were at Plymouth, you were at Everton for four years, uh, Leicester following that, uh, Hartlepool, Rochdale, and then Plymouth. 520 career uh, appearances. Just to clear up one thing, Ian Hesford was your supposed rival at Sheffield yeah. Wednesday when you arrived. He was already at the club. Uh, he got injured and you played in the first game. We all thought, oh, that's because Hesford got injured. But tell me quickly. No, uh, Ian, um, obviously Ian was a bit of a Jack the lad. I mean, God rest his soul, he, <laughs> yeah. he passed away. Um, so, um, but he was a lively lad. He liked to paint. He liked to fag. He liked life. And yes. his whole family was sports orientated. The whole family, I think international basketball do uh, sister, brother rugby league, other brother rugby union, all internationals, all, um, and Ian really underachieved. He yeah. was a superb goalkeeper, but he couldn't control his weight. I mean, I'm talking about weight now. I think I'm five stone over what I played at. Mm -hmm. Now, five stone's a lot, but I, w I played at about 13, 10 to 14. Yeah. Ian was always big, always struggled, but mainly he liked his drink. Yeah. I think they were having problems with Ian. I think that, and, and that's why I got the call that they weren't sure whether he yeah. was right for the first team. So uh, you were going to, you were yeah, signing his number one. Yeah, and, and then unfortunately he broke his finger, which, mm. and unfortunately again for him, he never played a game. Now, yeah. I remember him as a great character. Oh, um, absolutely. You know. We went to uh, we went to Asia, and he's a life and soul. He really yeah. is, and. Probably, that's probably his downfall was that he was, because I have to say I always thought that he had more ability than me. Right. But I worked that's harder. That's interesting. Let's come on to the present day goalkeepers at Sheffield Wednesday. Before we go on to, I'm going to have to be James Gregg as well, which means I'm going to have to drop 30 years, well, more than 30 years, probably 35 in the next couple of minutes. I have to round up everything else that's going on. Uh, James couldn't be with us this evening. Um, Kieran Westwood, they seem to be in a good place for goalkeepers at the moment, Sheffield Wednesday. You've got Kieran Westwood, you've got Joe Wildsmith, you've got Cameron Dawson. Let's take them in that order. Yeah, I, I think Kieran uh, is an exceptional goalkeeper at championship level. Um, I think he's been proved his worth. I think he's, he's made saves when you needed him. It's not all about making a save every five minutes and looking good. I think he's done well for the team. My only concern with Kieran is injuries. Um, yeah. You know, I was at a game, um, was it Wigan when he went off with his, uh, again, and it's not his fault, but he has, he, he gets a lot of injuries. Yeah. I like the way he controls his goal. Um, I like the way that he uh, is not afraid to, to, to actually get in amongst people. 
I think he's a weapon in terms of his kicking. Yeah. I think that is a big forte. And I know it's not all about kicking. It's about can you keep the ball out of the net. But he can counter-attack probably one of the best I've seen. Yeah. I think... Um, I think the other two boys have tremendous potential, but I don't get carried away with potential. I want to see, can either of those two be a Kieran Westwood? Week in, week out. A Martin Hodge, uh, you know, As you week were. in, week out. Consistent, yes. you know. Um, it's no, you know, I look at Mel Sterling, I look at Nigel Worthington, two of the best fullbacks I've ever had. Yeah. Consistent every single week. So, never really 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10. More Mel, probably, a bit higher than, than Nigel. But never, ever let you down. And I think that you have to get to the stage at goalkeeping where you don't let people down. And it's an easy thing, really. The less mistakes you make, the better you are. I think that's fairly obvious. Yeah. But that's how I always relate to goalkeepers. They make mistake after mistake. There's only so long you can carry on. I think the two young boys, I think Joe's had a, a wake-up call with the injuries. Yeah. He had a really bad one with the, with the knuckle. Yeah. Um, and I think he needs to. He went on loan and, and got, I think there was five put past him. And that is a wake-up call. Yeah. And it hey, might not be his fault, but welcome to the real world. Joe, now can you deliver? Yeah. The other boy came on in a game and I, he looked quite confident. Uh, and then I saw him in a game when he looked a bit nervy. He kicked one out of play and I'm thinking, but these boys look potential. Yeah. So I can't turn around and say, they're going to be this, they're going to be that. I'll, all I would say is there's something there, but it's, it's over a period of time. This ain't yeah. a month. This ain't two months. And you can't judge that to see, to see people Until they play exposed for, those, for a exactly, period of time. Exactly. Uh, as, as you were. We're going to come on to some of your memories. And, and that, that one in particular, obviously distressing memory for you about the near miss on, on England. We're going to come on to that very, very shortly. And your tweets. But just round up one or two, two other things uh, quite briefly. Um, because I can't do it as well as a guy that's a bit younger than me. A bit younger. Uh, ice hockey. Big weekend for Sheffield Steelers, uh, double header against their arch rivals, uh, Nottingham uh, Panthers uh, in the playoffs it is. Um, Nottingham is the venue on Saturday and then Sunday 5pm at the arena. That's a big one. I don't know if you're into ice hockey but it's a fantastic sport Martin and uh, it really is a spectacle uh, to see them. Basketball, Sheffield Sharks are on TV uh, this weekend. Um, it's streamed live actually on the BBC uh, Sport website. Sharks against Glasgow Rocks at 7.30. And before that, as a prelude uh, to it, Sheffield uh, Hatters against Nottingham Wildcats. Uh, do look that one up, but I'm pretty sure that's tomorrow at, um, where did I say it? The EIS. I went to watch Hallam FC last night. I go to watch non-league games, but I can't. I always find them very entertaining, Martin. I think for two reasons. The players are there for a sheer enjoyment and the managers always play an attacking game. Whenever I watch, that's the case. They do seem to. Do you yeah, ever watch non-league? Yeah, yeah, of course I do, because that's yeah. part of what we, oh, we, we, we try and find the diamond. Yeah. And unfortunately, the, they are rare. You know, that's what they are. But you try and find the diamond. Yeah, we watch uh, non-league. Um, I think that the higher you get again in non-league, the more serious it gets, the lower you get, the more enjoyment it is. I, I, I think there's lads there who have totally underachieved and you, they'll be the ones in the pub that will go, I could have been that. Well, yeah, you could, but why was the reason? Now, sometimes that's wrong place, wrong time. Weren't dedicated, injuries, yeah. didn't fit in with a certain manager and there's a host of... But I do get some lads thinking they were better than what they were because yeah. the game and you know watching the game yeah. it was quick in my day but, but wow wow isn't it quick now oh you go and I say and to somebody go and stand on the touchline and watch a Premier League game and you will be amazed at the speed that that goes now I know people that say well they pass it along the back and it's boring it's, it's not it's when it starts to the one-twos inside the final third, the little balls through, the, the movement, 
and the speed the of it. You can't tell it so much from a distance. No. And no. I, I see this in non-league as well. I yeah. look at these guys yeah. and see the technical ability yeah. and the entertaining yeah. play. I saw Hallam against uh, Glasshout and Welf Welfare in a League Cup quarter final, and Hallam lost this one 3-1. It was a rare defeat for them. And they were poor at both. And I, th I think Ryan Heinley's a very honest guy. He may disagree with me, but they missed a stack full of chances, mm. hit the bar a couple of times, goalkeeper saved when he should have been beaten, made mistakes. And it was one of those nights when really he should have won. But two well-matched teams. But above all, what entertainment on a poor pitch, you know, a really, really muddy pitch at Hallam. A, mm. a terrific entertainment. Goals are scored out through mistakes. Yeah, yeah. And you we know, you get the wonder goals, but you, you, you know, it wasn't if the you, keeper. <laughs> if you actually, if you actually analyse it and strip it back, there's somewhere on that pitch that somebody's made a mistake. Thank heavens for that. So, Otherwise, we wouldn't see any goals. No, would we? exactly. And and, and and you made a couple, just a couple. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, saving the best till last on on, on the roundup. Pride of place goes to Sheffield FC. Uh, they were at home to Market Drayton this week. And the result was Sheffield 9, Market Drake 0. And I'm told that was their biggest win, equaled their biggest win for over 65 years. Mm. So well done to Jazz Colliver, all the players there. Both Sheffield and Hallam are really competitive in their leagues. Tuesday, Hallam back in action, uh, uh, Sheffield back in action, a local derby against Stocksbridge Park Steels. And Hallam against Shirebrook Town next midweek in pursuit of a playoff place. Right. James will be back doing a lot better than me next week. To be honest, week. Al, you know, you look at the, the local sides and I take a big interest in yeah. Stocksbridge and Sheffield and Hallam. Um, I would say that um, they're always fighting the funds and that's the problem at all levels. The Premier League is so, uh, it's a wash with money. Mm. Lower down and lower down and lower down, it, it isn't as plentiful. And yeah. unfortunately, these local league teams always struggling to, for money and I'd like to see something change in football I you really would, would. Yeah. I see some of the money come cascading down yeah. let me uh, before we uh, go on with um, happy memories and, and one particularly uh, sad one uh, well I'll tell you what let's do the, let's do the tweets at the end um, let's come to that story of 1986 I've got a brief note from researching it and I remember it at the time you were poised to be in the England World Cup squad of 86. You were even measured for a suit, I believe. And then Gary Bailey, right at the last minute, was past fit, but he broke down in Mexico. Tell me the story. Mm. Yeah, you, you, you're, not, you, you're right, but, but what led up to that was that I was told I was going. I had my ticket, my plane ticket. I knew what time train I was catching out of Sheffield um, to go up to London. Um, I'd had all my kit delivered. I'd had everything. I, um, uh, I was told that Guy Bailey would not be fit at all. Um, now, if you remember, Alan Smith was physio at the time. Yeah. Now, although I don't believe, and I, I, he, may, he may put me uh, right because he would do, um, he would say that I don't think he was head, head physio at the time. I think he was joint. But he told me that um, Gary wasn't fit. And when he came back, he told me he, he'll never kick another ball. And I think the disappointing thing was is that he never kicked another ball. Mm -hmm. And I was fit and ready to go. Um, passport, everything, kit, the lot. And unfortunately, I was one of two left out of the 23-man squad, I think it was at the time. It was 23 or 24. And there was two of us left out. And it, it absolutely... It wrecked me for a period and without showing it to people it was something that I look back on and it, it still hurts because I was always told but especially by my father who was tough and I mean I come from a tough area but my, my dad was tough and I was one of four boys and, and we lived in a tough area and if you didn't fight for yourself you know the dogs used to go out in threes you know if you didn't fight for yourself you, you, you had to stand up so I was always t taught but I was always taught amongst that the values of manners, you know, they cost nothing. And I was always told that if you work hard, the rewards will be there. That was the only time in my career that I've gone, well, I've worked this hard. I've, I've thrown myself about for God knows how many years. I've worked hard to get here. And then somebody doesn't pass a fitness test, but I still don't go. And I felt that I'd put all that work in and somebody had dropped a, a big lead weight on my head. 
But it was a catastrophic, oh. a catastrophic mistake for England. But what it did yeah, to you, what it, it did it to was, you mentally. But what, it, what it did to me mentally at the time, it's probably, it, I just didn't believe in anything. And when you don't believe in anything as a goalkeeper, you've got a bit of a problem. I had probably the best coach anybody could ever have in football. And I had him earlier in life, because again, Howard brought in a goalkeeping coach, Alan Oskinson. Uh, yes. He was absolutely unbelievable. He was not only a goalkeeping coach, he was a mentor to me. Mm. So he would, when I'm having a bad time, talk me through it. Now, they were far and few between, and that's because of him. Because on a Wednesday, when everybody had a day off, I worked with him, yes. me and Ian and the, the other boys, young boys. And he would talk me, well, could you have done that better? Could you done... Yeah, fine. And he knew I worked hard. Mm. So... Um, I think that, that what you end up with is you end up with all those beliefs going out the window. And that was the hardest thing to take, that I'd always believed that the harder you work, the better you become. Life ain't fair. No, but having said that, I got to where I was, and I probably got there because I worked hard, because the, there was natural ability, but it wasn't, it wasn't Neville Southall ability. This was Martin Hodge. You, you know? said you were shattered by it. Did it affect your subsequent form? No, I think the team went. I'm not sure, and I, I use this to a, a, to a lot of people, that I speak to many people about the burnout factor. Yeah. And I think the way we worked, yeah. our, every Monday was an absolute grueler. And when people tell you stories of they run, you didn't run as hard as we did. I'll, I'll guarantee that. We could go on a 90-minute run and we'd stop, and he would then go extra time. And you'd go all around Bradfield and you'd go, you'd stop at the bottom of the hill and you'd do 10 up and jog down. Uh, and and it, it was tough, Al. I, I, but I took part in a pre-season training session with Howard. He was kind enough to allow me in. So I do, I yeah. do believe, yeah. yeah. It was a sweltering day, laps of the pitch for, for Africa. Some tweets, right? Okay, fantastic reaction to you. We'll breeze through some of these. Uh, Nikki, thank you to everybody who sent them, by the way. Uh, Nikki Rowlinson, uh, he says, my childhood favourite, one of the best. There were lots like that. John Straw, my favourite goalkeeper of all time. Ask him about the handball at Leeds in 1983. What's that yeah. all about? Just quickly, because I'm Richie sorry to... handballed it. Yeah. The ball come and he either. blatantly used his hand to score. Andy Ritchie. Yeah. And I ran from the goal to the to the touchline. Yeah. Because usually if it's a goal, it's a goal, fine, I, I don't mind. But this was so blatant I could not believe that people didn't allowed. see it. It was, yeah, it was a married on a hand of yeah, God yeah. by Andy Ritchie at least. Yeah, yeah. Crikey, well, well remember. I'm sure it was Andy Ritchie. <laughs> Apologies, Andy, if it wasn't you. Yeah. Uh, Jono says uh, I even saw Martin play without gloves. Hey. It's funny, but I watched. Uh, I was in the office yesterday in the analyst department, and they're all youngsters. They don't yeah. even know who I was. Well, my <laughs> daughter doesn't. She's 19. <laughs> what I'm saying is, they didn't see me play, oh. so they're messing about, and they've got this YouTube clip, and they said, "You've got no gloves on," and the pitch, and I went, "Well, that's how it was. The pitch was no grass on it, oh. and I had no gloves on, and it was a it was a nice day, but I never, I didn't feel the need for gloves. Now they've got these." You the old Kenny it. Everett gloves would be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, can, you can't stop it now, but no, I didn't. I you can you know. catch a ball better without gloves than with them, can you? Well, I, you could in those days. I mean, I'm not sure now. I mean, I think, listen, I, I, I don't know. I, no. I, I don't know the science behind it. But All you, I do know is when people say to me the ball moved and it was slippery, well, it was slippery in those days. <laughs> it still moves now and it moved then because yeah. I know Tottenham played with a Minerva ball that was like right. a size four. And that just zipped. Zipped about. Yeah. Right, Paul Johnson and somebody called Dunsby Owl. Yeah, Dunsby Owl posts some great tweets, historical ones. They both said, don't forget to rib him about the Grizovic goal, as if I'd forget to mention that. Did he score? <laughs> well, funny thing was, I interviewed you on that Saturday morning for a video. I down at the left it's, lane here. it's probably my fault. Well, I interviewed you, you won't remember that, for a video, and it was a windy morning, quite blustery. Yeah. And it was from that very end that Agrizovic launched a kick downfield, and I forget what happened. I forget it, what then well, happened. It, 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 I know what happened because uh, Paul Art was playing in front of me, and I thought Paul was going to head it. And yeah. if you know what my job was at Sheffield Wednesday, was sweeper. 
Yes. I swept everything. So you're going to be a long way out. Uh, that was Howard's way. We pushed up. We played percentage yeah. football. We won free kicks. We won corners. We we uh, we absolutely battered the goal. Um, and I was sweeper. So anything that came through, and I could kick it. Yeah. And on that day, I've taken up the position. And then I see this kick, and I saw Paul, and if I'm not wrong to this day, because I've never seen it and I don't want to see it. <laughs> we couldn't find it, by the way. Well, Come good. On. But, no, he, no, go but on. he ducked. Yeah. And the next thing I know, I'm looking round me, and to this day, I tell everybody, it actually hit the post and went in. Yeah. Now, I can't confirm that, and if somebody was stood at the back of the cop uh, and can tell me, I, I couldn't. But I'm led to believe that there, were, there was a lot of things in it that I've gone... Oh, that's just... A there was a lot of sods law about it, wasn't well, there? Well, there was, but it's <laughs> also... It's a, it, it, I see it as a fluke, but also I say it as, why, was I on top of the game? I'm not sure. No. I don't know. It's not a, it's, I'm not the only one it's happened to. No, quite. But, I was going to say that. But... Well, I, I don't, did it hurt that people remember that and don't remember well, no, the What the most... The hurtful thing is, uh, Alan, is that people bring it up when you go in the company, and I get it, but they don't... I know, funny enough, Jan Mulby last, uh, two weeks ago, we played yeah. Liverpool away, and I went to the game, because it was a yeah. Sunday. I don't go to our games, no. but I went to the game, and I'm in the press lounge, and Jan Mulby tapped me on the shoulder. He said, do you realise I, I had 65 penalties, and you were only one or three that saved my penalty. Really? Hey, that's something. He said, but I could never understand why you didn't stand in the middle of the goal. You put me off. <laughs> now... When you think, now, if I take that back, Al, three yeah. months, he was at the Working Man's Club at, yeah. um, Shai, I think, Shai Green or somewhere over that way, yeah. near Northern General Hospital. Yeah. So he's there, and my mate rings me up at 10 o'clock at night, and he says, yeah, Mulby's mentioned you. Yeah. And it's my, my good mate. He says, he said, there's a lad in Sheffield who saved one of my penalties, <laughs> and I was a... happy. <laughs> That's a good mention. Uh, uh, yeah, and it is so. <laughs> Nigel Laws, um, my all time number one Owls keeper, consistently good. Mick Fisher, best keeper of my time. Tom Eyre, wasn't it him who got, just we've got to be quick, wasn't it him who got knocked out cold in the game Sheffield Derby. United won at Leicester? No, it was Derby. Oh, no, I got knocked out at Leicester. 1990, Blades won 5 got 2 or 3. Knocked out from a yard. Right. Smashing and he broke. I, I thought my head had gone off my shoulders. You, did you play on? No, I, got, yeah. I played on and then I got taken off because I didn't even know what day it was. So and it Billy Whitehurst was, was staring at me. Yeah, so <laughs> you're best off going off. Uh, yes, Derby on a frozen pitch, he got knocked out. Adam Walker, finally, ask him if he's still fishing. He used to come into the tackle shop where I worked. Yeah, my lad was a, fisher, um, a fisherman. I wasn't, I just watched, but I right. took my lad there and he, he likes fishing. I, I've got to be honest with you. I didn't enjoy fishing because I used to sit there and not catch anything. So my lad, and he still fishes to this yeah. day. So if, if Jack Charlton had known that, he'd have signed you earlier than. Uh, than no, I was all right at Everton. <laughs> 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 well, well, the bait works. We managed to reel Martin in into the studio. It was quite a, quite a catch, quite a heavy catch as well, you know. But we, we, we've, we've thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed chatting to you. It's been mm. great to talk over old times current mm. times as well let's hope it's a great end to the season the blades are going up we know let's hope the owls get in those playoffs definitely. and they do it as well eh? it definitely yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, but, but but then look next season now if the us in the championship while we've got some derbies coming up they certainly have and derbies don't help you to get promotion too many derbies <laughs> they're in the way thanks for watching uh repeat at 11 meantime it'll be on my youtube channel this evening back with a a, a blades legend next week meantime thanks martin see you next week bye bye <laughs>